If you signed up for the Global Virtual Design Sprint, you're probably wondering how much time you should allocate from your schedule coming up this April for this event. Is it gonna be the full week? Do I have to tell my employer that I need to take the week off? How am I gonna manage with other dependencies that I have offline? Well, this video will briefly tell you what you should expect in terms of time commitments by being part of this event. So let's get into the time commitments that we're looking at. Before the sprint even starts, you do have a few things you have to keep in mind. First and foremost is definitely pay attention to what's going on in Slack. There's The updates are going to be coming fast and furious towards the latter part of March. You don't want to miss much. Emails will have the summaries of what happens in that channel, but if you really want to get to know the people you may be working with, as well as the greater community of practitioners that are involved with this event, you definitely want to pay attention to that channel. You also need to know and be able to keep track of the sprint team that's going to be forming and the sprint structure as well as your role that you're going to be taking on. Now this is something that you probably don't know at this point since teams haven't formed as of the recording of this video, but when they do come up, you're going to want to take some time to make sure that you understand what your role is, what you're on the hook for, and what you're responsible for. And the amount of time allocated to getting understanding that may differ from team to team, but it is something that you definitely want to keep in mind. Now during the actual sprint, same thing as before, just make sure you're paying attention to Slack if that's your, your platform of choice for cross-collaboration on your team. For any online together activities that your team decides to do as part of the design sprint process, you want to be present and active. Try to cut down a lot of the distractions that normally may come into you being isolated in a, in a remote area or virtually. And you also want to make time for offline alone activities. Sometimes when you have other considerations like work or family life or other commitments, you may, in the course of doing a virtual design sprint, consider your offline activity something you can do right before you go to bed. It's a mistake to, to kind of think that. You definitely want to allocate and res reserve particular times during your day or even at night where you're going to have uh, uninterrupted time to do those offline alone activities that your team is kind of counting on you for when you come back for the next session. And then finally, after your sprint, it's important to have the retrospective so that everyone is on the same page about what happened and how to move forward with what's happened out of the sprint. For some sprint teams, they wanna continue on with what they've done and see where it could potentially go as a real product. And then for those that are looking to promote themselves and their professional brand as being part of this event and this exercise, you want to definitely take time out to do that, uh, either on social media, written word, on Medium, whatever your choice of avenue is. You want to allocate, I would say, especially after the event is over, if you can, anywhere from five to ten hours to really put some material together that you can look back and point to and say, this is a summary, an, a, just an accurate summary of my involvement with the Global Virtual Design Sprint. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments about what you just saw, feel free to post below. Otherwise, like and subscribe at your leisure and stay tuned for more videos about the Global Virtual Design Sprint.